Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Shirley, also known as Backtalk, and I do anything Disney. But today we are in downtown Chicago because I am covering our experience for the Harry Potter Magic at Play. So Harry Potter Magic at Play is this interactive activity that you can pay <laughs> to go do. And it is over in downtown Chicago. To be more specific, it's over by the Water Tower Place in 835 North Michigan Ave, which is pretty much where all of the shops are. It's the uh, Magmile so it will be all the way down past the shops past everything it's almost the last building of that uh, lane but it is $42.50 per adult and $34 per child you can do a premium uh, adult and child which means you can cut the line not that it really made any difference for us whatsoever um, so the premium adult was $66 and the premium child was $52 or you can do a group ticket where you buy six tickets and you get 10% off. So it would end up being $38.25 per person. So if you have a large group, that might be what's best for you. They also have a coat check and that is $3 per item. What I recommend you do is you put all of your big jackets, everything in one big tote bag and check in one tote bag instead of each coat. We didn't think about this until I left and I was like, oh, we should have put it in the bag. So that would be my first recommendation. But yeah, let's go ahead and get started. I'm so excited for you to see all of the adventures we went through so let's hear all about it i should say that this interactive has three floors um first you have to go up a floor because we were started in the second floor technically so you go up a floor you get to see a bunch of merch i have those sunglasses i bought them at barnes and noble actually and they have other things that are particular to them so they have these scrunchies they have those ties they have cloaks at the end of the video i will show you all of their merchandise on the way out i will just say really quickly that the quality is not great it's cheaper than universal studios but it's not great but the first thing you do is you go to Privet Drive and you get to see all the owls and there's somebody there taking a picture um, for you. You can ask them to use your camera, but it was a very hit or miss for us uh, because they are trying to sell the pictures they take. But you come into the first room with the Dursley's house and it's the scene where all of the letters are coming in for Harry. I think it's so funny. Um, I love the books. I listen to the books constantly on my audiobooks. And I just love how specific the letters are to where Harry Potter is constantly like reciting at. It's so funny. But I think this is meant to be for kids. They were supposed to climb up and then slide down. Now it doesn't say age requirements, height requirements, weight requirements. So I considered doing this, but I did not. And then there is a little peak hole underneath the stairs where you can see some blankets and a little bit of trinkets uh, through it where Harry used to be. Then we move on to platform nine and three quarters where you can take pictures with these trolleys. Uh, this also reminded me of Universal Studios Florida. I do think the ones in Florida are much cooler <laughs> because it has the effect of disappearing. Uh, this one is just you take a picture right there in the fixed section. I really like the walls they did here. It felt very in tune. And then there was a ton of hand sanitizer stations all over the place. Stick to your ticket. <laughs> that was awful. I'm so sorry. I will never do that again. I promise. Uh, so then we have the Hogwarts Express. I made my husband take a couple of pictures. Uh, he looks so happy doing it too. And then you have the um, treat trolley and some of the suitcases where again you can take pictures at. They had the Hogsmeade station timetables and fairs. So it was very cute to theme. I don't know if I would call this interactive yet, but it was definitely good for pictures. So if you dress up, this is a perfect place to take a bunch of pictures. There are other people like with you because you, you choose a time to go in, but you know, people will wait, you'll take pictures, they'll take pictures of you and then you'll take turns and you know, it's like that. So yeah, so then we move on and we are moving towards Hogwarts. Have you seen this wizard? If you have, call me because I think he's so cute. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we have the boat where they're going into Hogwarts in the first movie. Um, very, very nice. Again, I don't know if it's necessarily interactive. You can definitely sit in a boat. They only allow two families in here per turn, so we can have enough time to take as many pictures as we want, which was nice, but there was no one there taking pictures for us, so we had to take turns. And then we go in and it's time to be sorted. Now, when I read this, I thought they were gonna sort us, like we would take a quiz or something because it said get sorted, but it is actually just the sorting room. It, there's no actual sorting or activity that you get to do to see which house you're in. Not that I need one because I already know I'm a Slytherin through and through. Um, but each table had, you know, some sort of um, aspect of what it is to be in that house. It had the house banner, in the house crest and it just had some of the descriptions of being in that house 
Um, I only filmed slithering, so sorry, but it's a very slithering thing of me to do. It had the really nice post where um, Dumbledore stands, and then it had the hat, rest in peace, uh, which was also very cute. And again, there's somebody there taking professional pictures, um, although you could put your camera on the side. Then you have the hall where you're going into Hogwarts. None of the frames move, so it's not like Universal Studios where the frames are constantly changing. It's just the frames. And you have the Mordor's map, um, which is very cute. I actually have a mouse pad of the Mordor's map. And again, you have more of the banners as you're walking through this kind of empty area. I feel like they could have done more with this area. Um, it just felt like it was a lot of lost of space because they tell, take you to the sorting hat. That's what they call it. And again, it doesn't actually sort you. It's just another place where you can take pictures. So they give you this card that you can scan in areas like this where there's like a self-taking camera. And then you sit in the area and on the screen you can see yourself. And then you can take a camera and again, you can purchase the camera. Um, it's very, very cute, but I don't know. It just felt like empty space to us. Then you walk through more empty space, very cute decorations, very cute signs. This one's talking about uniforms, so this is the list that you get as you're coming into uh, Hogwarts as a brand new kid. Um, so this was nice, and again, this is where a bulk of us started to like compound because you're coming out of the sorting hat so um, we felt like before we had quite a bit of room between us and the next party and then once we got here it started to feel a little more crowded um, as we're going down to the next floor I will say you do book a time if you buy premium you get to cut the line quote unquote but you're still all in there at the same time and they don't necessarily kick you out they tell you you have a window uh, but there's no one there to push you it's just more people come in so you would feel naturally inclined to get pushed Anyways, you come down and you have uh, Wingardium Leviosa where you get to use your magic to um, lift uh, a feather and I did the ibikidibi on my husband, which is what you just saw. And then you have Trelawney's room of divination and there's me making the best impression I possibly can. Uh, good thing I did not go into acting. <laughs> but that's me just you know taking pictures this little area not a lot of people saw because as you come down the staircase on the left you have Trelawney's which is just like a dead end and on the right you have Snape's which is so much cooler so I think a lot of people missed this little section out so we had it all to ourselves and I was just having too much fun um, predicting the future <laughs> for my husband and pretending to be Hermione and knocking the ball out but it's very cute and then they had these thick teacup section as well um i didn't see the hound but you know i looked for it so here's what i'm talking about you have potions class so potions class i think this is where you actually start being interactive um, because before i wouldn't necessarily call it interactive yes you can take pictures but i wouldn't say it's like interactive where you get to do hands-on things in this section you get to do hands-on things so um, as you can see there's little jars there and there's activities you can do with the jar so this one for first if you put your hand over it um, it changes colors it bubbles it's like acting like you're making a potion I was making a Felix 6 because I need all the luck I can get to get uh, more people to subscribe to me. Um, hint, hint. <laughs> uh, we'll see if it works. And then you have these little jars. So on one side, you can smell it. So you have different uh, ingredients that go into it. So warm wood. And you get to smell it and see what it smells like. Fox Love did not like, apparently. And then the next one uh, we have... I think I like the Felice's one. I think this one was a good one. Yeah, yeah, good one. <laughs> um, it, I did get dizzy, but that's just me. So you have a whole section where you can smell and use the scents. And then you have a section where you get to touch, which is the basket. And then, which I did not do because there was a lot of children and yeah. And then you have sight. And the sight one, you get to drag the magnifying glass over the ingredient and you get to see what it would look like. Um, magnified so this was a really cute section there was a lot of children in the section um, that's why I think they have so many hand sanitizer stations and things like that so if you're like me and after COVID-19 you're now like a germ freak there's plenty of hand sanitizers but yeah so then they have four uh, different recipes that you could make quote unquote you weren't actually making them I think that would have been really cool uh, but you were um, pretending to make them but I still liked it I like the turn to page uh, quote it's one of my favorite quotes I am a teacher and I always say that I feel like I would be Snape kind of <laughs> but this is me making a 
a potion. So this is what I mean that you're making them, but not really. All you're doing is spinning them. Again, kids were having so much fun with this. I did feel like adults like us who went by ourselves, um, you had to use your imagination. Uh, there's Polyjuice Potion. If you use Polyjuice Potion, who would you become? I don't know that I would want to use it. I don't want to become a cat like Hermione by accident, you know? Um, yeah, I don't think I would. And then there's the love one and I was telling my husband to take some of it and he refused. So mean. Uh, so then we go inside and this is um, the pixies when they go wild. And I'm trying to catch them because I feel like I would be a good pixie collector. I feel like <laughs> I got what it takes to do that. And then you have all of the frames uh, from the Defense of Dark Arts. So very interactive, very cute. Again, I think it's more geared towards children, but you can still have a lot of fun if you're going in as an adult, just if you like Harry Potter. This is the Quidditch uh, whole area. This whole area was for Quidditch. So in this one, they were testing your reflexes. So you actually got a score uh, based on how fast you were. And then there's an area to take pictures. So you're not actually flying, but it was kind of nice. And again, you have to pay for these pictures. So I just had my husband do it. And then I'm gonna try to play around with the green screen. I'm gonna see if I can edit it. Then you have these rings where you can toss it and pretend to play Quidditch. My husband's destroying at this, look at this. I was not destroying at this, <laughs> but he was, he was made for this, look at it. Um, and then they had another strength game. It's kind of like those carnival games where you get to hit down the hammer and see how high it goes. I've actually never done these. I'm too scared. I'm too like embarrassed to do it in carnivals. I feel like it would go nowhere where I would miss. But this was nice. It was a good experience and uh, there wasn't that big of a line. So there's my husband doing it like, no, no problem. <laughs> and then you go down. This is still the same floor technically. So you're still technically in the second floor. But um, it's just broken down because again, this is like a mall area. So it's not a perfect three floors. And this is where you get to do the Lego experience. A lot of people skip this. Um, there was no one there manning it, so there was a little bit of confusion on who was next. But what you get to do is you get to create your own, and then you get to cast four spells, and your Lego person gets to do them in front of you. So first thing you have to do is make your account, so that's what we did. You pick your house, slithering all the way, as we talked about. You can pick a variation of skin pigmentation, skin color, depending on what you want. Then you can pick uh, expression, so I picked... Uh, this one was really cute. I probably should have picked that one, but I was feeling uh, slithering kind of way. So you'll see what kind of expression I ended up with. Um, yeah, that's that's me in the morning. So <laughs> that was the winner. Uh, you can also pick different hair. So this reminded me a lot of like create your own Funko, um, which is kind of cute, but you can't actually buy it. So I would have liked the experience to be better if I could buy my Lego that I created. But here you can pick different hairstyles, different hair color. So this is me back when I had long hair, uh, before I had a haircut. And you can pick the, the color. There's other fun colors. There should be a couple more fun colors, but um, there's some variety. I, I feel like there's more than the Funko variety. And then you can select uh, two items that you can hold. So I obviously wanted a wand. And then I was between the Mad Hatter, Mad Hatter <laughs> the Sorting Hat, and Crookshanks. So I ended up with Crookshanks. Um, aka Marceline, my cat. So once it forms, then your little person goes up there. I put back talk, of course, that's my channel, welcome. And um, you get to pretty much animate it. So it kind of works like sensors. And that was my first uh, catching spell. This is my second one. So the first spell, you levitate. Second spell, you illuminate. Uh, you have to pretty much scream <laughs> the spell or say it really loudly for it to work. Um, a lot of kids were having a really hard time with the spells because you have to say it very clear and very loud and um, you know, it's just different, but you have to pick these. I was having too much fun with this, but you are timed, as you can see at the bottom, because there's only four stations. Um, and then next to it was this Lego. I will tell you that there's two more stations over by the store, so if you want to wait and do it by the store, do that instead and you don't have to wait in line. And this is the last floor, so this is the Forbidden Forest where they give you a really cute lantern. I felt so cute holding this. And they give you a cute lantern and it's your job to go look for Patronuses. So you can see we're all looking for Patronuses. I found this one, which was a horse. Um, have you taken the Pottermore test? What would be your Patronus? Um, I have not taken it, 
but I think I would either be a dragon <laughs> because I'm very uh, fiery or um, a lemur because I can also be the opposite <laughs> and just be boring sucking up the sun so I don't know they had these pumpkin things that you could try lifting um, again he's making it look so easy but it wasn't that easy and then they have this house the Weasley's house and this was definitely for little ones there's no way I could have fit in but it's really cute can you imagine having that in the backyard amazing um, and then they had the uh, forest not the forest the maze um, when you went around for the Goblet of Fire, the last maze, um, and this was kind of fun. I mean, it wasn't necessarily challenging, it's not meant to, but there was quotes all over the maze, um, and then there was little things that you could do. So for this one, you had Niffler, you know, you just follow the coins, so th this was a nice little thing to Fantastic Beast. You had Luna's glasses, if you looked inside, there was uh, images that you could look at, so that's Luna and Harry. And then we also had um, the phoenix, so majestic, like how cute. And then the last one, my favorite, it's Dobby. And then you had these ears. On the other side, there was another pair of ears, so you could talk to somebody on the other side of this grass wall. I don't know how hygienic it was. I didn't get too close to it. <laughs> um, and then they had Luna's shoe, which is a very cute nod, very like subtle. They had more quotes. I was just really in it for the quotes on this one just because I had all the feels of the books um, and I was thinking about them. Um, I don't go looking for trouble. Oh, I definitely go look for trouble. Again, you have the banners on the top and then they have these vines. Again, I think it's for the Goblet of Fire that we went through. You don't have to, but we did. They had the night bus, not as amazing as Universal Studios, but still pretty cool. And then they just had sitting stations. So if the kiddos still had energy after all that, then they can run around, kill that energy as you sit there. Um, this is where you buy the pictures. This is the ending, actually. So there's the uh, prices for the pictures. We did not purchase any pictures whatsoever. Um, a single photo is $20 and it's a digital copy, which is very expensive. Um, and then we are getting to the merchandise. So as you're looking at the merchandise, just uh, quick things. We both had a really nice time at Magic at Play. Um, if you're a big, big Harry Potter person and you like what you saw and you can envision yourself with your wand and your cloak, taking pictures and having a fun time, it's definitely for you. If you have children who are really into Harry Potter, I feel like the children really had a lot of fun. Um, but it is really expensive and it was okay. That's, that's our experience. I feel like if you look at the website, it looks like this whole interactive fun craziness. And in reality, it's a bunch of picture ops and some interactive. So for us, it's one and done. For us, if we had a family, I think we rather hold off and use those 36 bucks or whatever it is and take them to Universal Studios eventually or something like that. Uh, so that's just my recommendation. Again, if, if you have questions, leave them in the comments below. I would be happy to answer any questions. This is a pop-up, so I don't know how long it's gonna be in downtown Chicago. I don't know if it works like the other pop-ups, like the office or the friends one where they travel, um, but is it worth doing? Yes, absolutely, especially if you like Harry Potter, especially, especially if you wanna take really cute pictures and you have really cute outfits to take. Um, so yeah, that's my overall review. And then we have merchandise. As I talked about before, the merchandise was cute and they have different houses. You can see, or if you already saw, there was Funko Pops, there was Legos, there's merchandise for each house, there's little baby onesies, there's sweatshirts, there's spirit jerseys. I don't know if I can call it that since it's not Disney. Um, they have these little scrunchies. This, I actually bought that scrunchie. Uh, they have these pillows, which I feel like I've seen in other places. Again, any place where you buy Harry Potter merchandise, um, like Barnes and Noble, um there's there's me <laughs> hello not for not for sale um they also had uh honey dukes but the quality of everything was okay so that pouch was 15 dollars. i considered it but when you open it it's not like it has like a cute lining or like a solid lining it felt like it would like stain or break really quickly so just be aware of that um they also had honey dukes merchandise which was really cute but again nothing that i'm like oh, i need to buy it the shirts felt printed um, I considered a pin, uh, pin sets, reasonably priced, right, $13 compared to the parks, but I do want to give a disclaimer, I do live in Arizona, I do have an annual pass for Universal Studios 
um, Hollywood, the one in California. So merchandise comes and goes very often there. Um, I get a discount and the quality there is much better. The prices are higher, but I think it's worth it if it's gonna last longer. Um, but overall, there is a lot to shop from. You don't have to pay for the experience to go into the shop. So if you just wanna check out the shop, maybe something that you're seeing right now is something that interests you. You don't have to pay for the experience. You can just walk into the Water Tower Palace on the bottom side over by Wow Bao and you can get in. Um, same thing uh, with the owl post. You don't have to go in if you wanna send a postcard. Um, they were $3 each and same thing with the butter beer. So they sell, they have like a little cafe where you can go in. You don't have to pay for the experience. You can just go into this cafe. There's two entrances and you can get some butter beer, you can get some treats. Um, I did get a butter beer. I don't think I've drank it yet. <laughs> it's, it's, I haven't, I brought it home and I didn't drink it. They said it's the same company as Universal Studios, so that's kinda nice. But yeah, I hope you like this. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see more content. Leave me a comment of what house you are in. I would love to know. And it does help me out when you subscribe. And I have videos all the time. Universals, Disney, vlogs, cruises, all sorts of things. So please consider it. I hope you have a magical day. And until next time, adios. Thank you.